Hello, it's Jasper. Welcome to part four of my GeoGuessr Canada series and welcome to Ontario. Now, just like last video, I'm going to start and end with three images, each of which will include some of the meta clues that you should know by the end of this video. Some of the clues are specific to Ontario, uh, some are based on geography, and some of the clues are more specific to the city or region. Um, before we get into any of the tips, though, we need to look at the Google coverage for Ontario, as we normally do. And since the US makes this map way too confusing, I'm going to crudely cut it out. And now we should all be familiar with the fact that most Canada coverage is in the south of the province. With Ontario, that's especially true. And most of the coverage is much further than even the rest of the country that we've looked at previously out west. Uh, so if you talk about northern Ontario, what literally counts as northern Ontario above the northern half, nobody really lives there. So when I talk about Northern Ontario in this video, when most people talk about Northern Ontario, they mean a much more generous section that corresponds to all of Ontario that's in the Canadian Shield, more or less. Of course, when people in Toronto talk about Northern Ontario, they mean anything north of Vaughan, but that's a joke. Forgetting that, the point is that this region of Southern Ontario contains more people than all of the Western provinces combined, everything we've covered. Next, let's talk about Ontario Meta in no particular order. Ontario can be quite a tricky province to guess. Uh, sometimes it's easy to confuse with the prairies, very easy to confuse with Nova Scotia or Quebec, and often easy to confuse with the U.S. as well. However, there are some well-known tricks to pinpoint it, uh, starting with the black bar underneath the speed signs. This is found on 90% of speed signs in Ontario and 0% outside the province. Um, the license plate isn't particularly distinctive, but they do use front plates, which helps to distinguish it between Quebec or Nova Scotia, which do not use front plates. And Ontario loves diamond-shaped bollards, a variety of sizes and colors. Now, finally, Ontario has a lot of different area codes. The two area codes in the north are rare to see because all of the coverage is so rural, but the four area codes further south can be very useful uh, for differentiating between different cities down there. See part one for fresher and helpful quizzes on area codes if you need it. Ontario poles are quite distinctive from the rest of Canada, although not always different from the U.S. Ontario loves using cup-shaped line posts. Uh, there's a semicircle line post and then what's called a line post insulator that connects it to the cable. The only other province that uses these is BC, but that's much less common there. Uh, you will see the same design in the States, however. The other technique for guessing provinces out east involves markings on the bottom wire. Uh, the phone cable of some utility poles, but not all. So you can see a large amount of orange stickers or orange tags on this wire and on the junction box down here. I'll be contrasting these orange stickers with other markers that you see in Quebec and the Maritimes in the next few videos. But if you see more than one tag, you should be in Ontario. Uh, going a bit faster, these construction bollards, orange and black only, are rarely in other provinces, but are common as dirt in Ontario. Uh, these wood post guardrails are ubiquitous in northern Ontario. It's all I would see for days every summer when I used to drive there on vacation. And then Ontario uses a myriad of different methods to end their metal guardrails. Uh, some we've seen before, such as the bottom right picture, which looks similar in Alberta. Uh, but some I haven't introduced yet, although I'm sure they exist somewhere in North America. And then Ontario has a lot of different ways to mark underground pipelines or cables. Like the rest of Canada, you can sometimes see the orange cylinder on a stick method, um, but you can also see different kinds of designs, including a metal cylinder here that looks suspiciously like the American version. And that's a quick reminder of what the American line, underground line markers look like. Next, we go back to Ontario's geography. And again, the main difference is between the Canadian Shield in Northern Ontario and the farmland of Southern Ontario. So Northern Ontario, you should only confuse it with Newfoundland if you have no markings to see, while Southern Ontario can be confused with all manner of other regions. Uh, we'll look at a Google map coverage on the left and the elevation on the right. The brown areas here are higher elevation and generally hilly, while green areas are flat and lower elevation. Northern Ontario is where GeoGuessr rounds go to die. I have done my best to find clues for you but sometimes there's only so much that I can do. Most of the coverage looks a lot like this, 
um, winding roads with rock walls on either side that have been blasted away to make room for the flat road. And there are two areas of Northern Ontario that are good for farming, however. The Rainy River area is by the U.S. border in the Northwest. It's very difficult to guess in most GeoGuessr rounds, but it's possible to convince yourself if it looks exactly like Manitoba, but has Ontario meta clues. It's, it's totally doable. It's just hard to convince yourself. And then there is the Clay Belt in Northeastern Ontario, which carries over into Northern Quebec as well, even to greater extent. It combines cold Northern trees like pine and aspen, but with more farms. It's still very hard to guess uh, it correctly, but there's relatively little coverage in the grand scheme of things, so I wouldn't worry about it very much. Moving on to Southern Ontario, I wanna show the classic look to a Southern Ontario agriculture. Compared to Western Canada, the farms are much smaller. It means there will be multiple houses visible in the same image, and not all of them are used for farming to the same extent. So you'll have old farm buildings next to newer houses, You'll have more horses for recreation and fewer cows, those kinds of things. Even with larger lots and real farming going on, you should only be confusing it with eastern provinces or states if you're uh, skilled at guessing these areas in GeoGuessr. So again, we see different farmhouses for each lot here. There's a farmhouse over here, there's buildings over here. And the other thing is these small grain silos, which I'll blow up in this picture are also something you should expect to see a lot out east in North America, but not out west, where they'll use different types of buildings. Now with that in mind, let's focus on the geography of the elephant of southern Ontario. So you can see that it's an elephant if you rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, one guess on where I spent all of my summer holidays growing up. Yes, the charming town of Owen Sound, Ontario. But there are two general rules of thumb for guessing southern Ontario. More hills the further you go north, and more trees the further you go west. So I've managed to pull off some pretty spectacular guesses using just that combination of tip. Uh, further east, we get geography like this. You can see the dense tree coverage on the side of the road. Now the land around London is the go-to hedge for a generic flat farmland in Ontario, with regular copses of trees around, but also lots of fields. And then if you get an Ontario round that really does look like the prairies, very flat, few trees, that's when I start to go for the elephant's trunk near Windsor, Ontario. It's extremely flat. There's some windmills sometimes, like in this image. That's the idea. City meta in Ontario demands a different approach than with the other provinces, because Ontario is just too big. For example, Timmins up here in the northeast is the 53rd largest municipality in Ontario. So we're not getting to Timmins. I'm not giving you a single meta clue about Timmins, but Timmins would be the third biggest city in Saskatchewan. So instead, let's focus on what we do see here. If you've watched any of the other videos in this series, you can guess what the color of these city markers represent that I've shown. Fire hydrants. Ontario has a very easy to remember rules about fire hydrants. Everything has a yellow body with two big exceptions. Sault Ste. Marie in Northern Ontario and this star which I've labeled here Hamilton++. Plus Plus. Now, if we zoom in on this area around Toronto, sometimes called the Golden Horseshoe, where a ridiculously high proportion of Canadians live, ignore the colors that came with the map. The point is that the red fire hydrants start as soon as you leave Toronto proper and enter the municipalities, of Min municipalities of Mississauga or Brampton. Uh, then they run all the way along the shoreline of Lake Ontario to Niagara Falls. The region shown here along the shoreline from Niagara up somewhere to these regions in the north as well, all are part of the 905 area code. So when you combine the 905 area code with any fire hydrants that you can see, you can often get some really good guesses. So we've covered all of the cities with red fire hydrants in Ontario. And you may not know, but every province east of Ontario coming later in this YouTube series also uses red fire hydrants. So now the only goal left to us is to differentiate the remaining large number of cities in Ontario that use yellow fire hydrants. Let's start with the north. How can we tell apart Thunder Bay and Sudbury? This is Thunder Bay. Northern Ontario has a general aesthetic. It's a bit poorer, so the houses will be smaller. The roads have more cracks due to the cold winters, and it just looks colder. More evergreen trees. The, the month of May does not look like this in Toronto. 
Now, beyond the aesthetic, I'll mention two specific meta clues. All yellow fire hydrants. I've mentioned this before, but the nozzle colors on hydrants are less reliable than the body. But for me, all yellow fire hydrants act as a trigger. I should consider Northern Ontario. And for Thunder Bay, the Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. It's a peninsula visible from a few places in the city across Lake Superior. It's also where my parents got engaged. Now, the lake alone differentiates it from a lot of cities in Northern Ontario. Next up, Sudbury, the nickel capital of Canada. Sudbury is substantially similar to Thunder Bay and easy to mix up. To tell them apart, we need a new map. And here is a map of Ontario with the proportion of residents who speak French as a first language. So like you'd expect, it's overwhelmingly close to the border with Quebec. And you'll notice some overlap with a lot of places, but you'll notice overlap with Sudbury. Because of this, expect most street signs on Sudbury to be bilingual. So even if you can't read the street sign, the French will always come before. And so here we have Rue Patterson Street. Now it's not 100% reliable, unfortunately, but if you get all English Sudbury, probably just take the L and guess Thunder Bay. Finally, two more clues on this utility pool. Remember that the area code is different between Sudbury and Thunder Bay. So this 705, you would assume that you're in Sudbury. You maybe can't rule out some smaller cities nearby, but you would assume. And then the other thing I've learned to expect in Sudbury is these large yellow letters on almost all of the utility poles. Now, I'm trying to be careful in saying this because Ontario spams utility poles with all kinds of numbers and metal markers. So other than this one clue, I can't keep them straight, but big yellow numbers in Sudbury seem to be a thing. Now that finishes up with Northern Ontario, leaving the much harder challenge of Southern Ontario cities with yellow fire hydrants. We're going to start with Ottawa because it's the easiest. Now that we're out of the rocky Canadian shield, expect things to look a lot more lush. This is May coverage again, just like in Thunder Bay. But we have a big maple tree here on the lawn. The maple leaf is a symbol of Canada, it's on the flag, but it really doesn't grow in most of the country. And that's surprising for a lot of people who grew up in Toronto or Quebec because they pepper the landscape. Uh, and so we've got a big maple tree on the left here. We also have large brick buildings. Um, these large, expensive brick buildings can really only be Ontario, Quebec, or the States. But you only need two clues for Ottawa. First, the street signs. They're all blue, and they have both French and English. So not only is it Fifth Avenue, but it's Avenue Fifth. And the second is the Ukraine flag fire hydrants. So I've said before that a lot of towns and cities use blue and yellow for their fire hydrants, but in Ottawa, it is almost always blue top, yellow everything else, Ukraine flag. I would also say that Canadian flags in general are more common in Ottawa, like we see on these houses. It's the nation's capital. And this is the kind of flag waving I would expect in the States, but we see it here. And we see exactly this color combination is fairly unique to Ottawa. It's quite useful. Next up is Toronto. It's a city larger than most provinces in Canada. Now, I'm actually starting with Toronto suburb just to give you a vibe. You just don't see neighborhoods of brick houses this expensive in other parts of Canada. But Toronto city proper has enough meta that you should almost always get it with confidence. There's a lot of meta in this one picture just by accident. I meant to just start with what's front and center with the street sign. Most cities in Ontario use green street signs and so the blue stands out and the white background in blue is really ubiquitous in Toronto and unique to Toronto. But I've said almost nothing about garbage bins so far in this video, and that's largely because most of Ontario doesn't have municipal garbage bins yet. But Toronto bins are often displayed prominently, and they have a recognizable City of Toronto logo on them, you can see here. The last clue was just a reminder that Toronto uses a unique 416 area code, but instead, let's talk about fire hydrants. Here, we see a yellow fire hydrant. It's got a blue ring on one side, a black ring on the other. The nozzles happen to be yellow. Am I about to tell you to memorize another fire hydrant? No. End of the line, everybody off. The problem is, there's just a huge number of large to mid-sized cities in Ontario with very similar yellow fire hydrants. And the markers on the nozzles change all the time based on the flow rate. The only fire hydrant meta for Ontario is to remember where the red fire hydrants go. All yellow might mean north, and Ottawa is a Ukrainian flag. 
After that, things get really hard. So what can we do? Well, remember your area codes, that can help. We can go back to street signs. So almost all of these cities use green street signs, but not Toronto, not Ottawa, and not Guelph. So add Guelph to the list of pinpointable cities if you can tell that it's not Toronto or Ottawa. And then I'll also add Mississauga, Niagara, which use blue street signs, but with the red fire hydrants. And finally, Kitchener, which uses a white striped border around all of its signs, which I think makes it unique in Ontario and pretty recognizable. Is this too much to ask people to remember? Maybe, but there's good news and bad news there because this is pretty much all I've got. Uh, you combine the fire hydrant color with road sign color to figure out half of the cities, and then you do a fudge factor where the closer you are to Toronto, the nicer looking your homes, the nicer looking the streets, that kind of thing. And after that, how do you tell Kingston and Windsor apart? You tell me. Most cities don't have garbage bins. The exception is Toronto, and I would also add Mississauga and Brampton have a region of Peel bin that can be useful. Uh, the next logical step might be transit system. That could help with London, a fairly large city with an intuitive LT symbol, London Transit, on the buses. But unfortunately, I find that by far, Toronto and Ottawa have the most distinctive bus stops, and they're based on a less, co less common red color scheme. And they're already easy cities to guess. Everything else has either easily forgettable patterns or it's too small for transit to even matter much. I don't think I'm subjecting you or me to tracking down and memorizing every vaguely blue colored bus stop. And in the end, I don't know how important that would be for getting Ottawa, uh, Ontario correct anyway. Instead, let's finish with the rural meta. And unfortunately, there's only so much for me to tell. By far the most important thing is to remember the geography, which can get you good guesses in southern Ontario at least. But the next most useful clue involves rural house numbers. So these rural house numbers are either blue or green signs, and they can exist all over North America. Unfortunately, I don't know as much about what they look like in the States. But in Canada, they can either be blue or green in the prairie provinces, but they just are much, much less common there. They are common in Quebec and the Maritimes, but in Quebec and the Maritimes, they are always blue, or at least not green. There's some random other colors that are pretty rare. Um, if I see a blue sign, I usually guess Nova Scotia. But what if I know I'm in Ontario? Well, then you want to guess it in one of these red regions, either south of London, east of Ottawa, it's a pretty large region that uses blue signs there, or if I'm in northern Ontario, far west around Kenora. Now, I'm fundamentally just not that good at Northern Ontario sometimes, but if I'm really stretching for advice here, I'll highlight some ideas. Very rocky sides of the road, over there. Snow, over here, near Nipigon Thunder Bay. A lot of Generation 2 coverage on a lot of these smaller roads and some of the major roads, but they have new coverage as well. And then finally, bilingual road signs close to the border of Quebec. And that's it. That's all I've got for northern rural meta, unfortunately. So in conclusion, let's revisit the images we saw at the beginning of the video. There's a lot of meta to see here. We've got uh, cup-shaped line posts on the pole. We've got a diamond top bollard, although it's hard to see. We have a 519 area code for southwestern Ontario and an extremely flat prairie skyline. So this image is from the elephant trunk near Windsor. We've also got these supporting poles over here. I've never seen them before, and I have no idea how common they are, but that's interesting. And then in this photo, we have the cups again, just barely visible. We have a black bar underneath the speed sign. We have a green house number sign that excludes certain areas in our guess. And mostly we have big rolling hills, uh, but still with the Southern maple trees. So this location is in central Ontario, an hour north of Guelph or so. And then finally, we have a rundown street and Ontario construction bollards, and we have a yellow fire hydrant. We can hardly read the street sign, but we can just make out a hint of text before the name, which indicates that there's French there. And also, entirely by accident when I chose this, we can just barely make out these large yellow letters on the utility pole. This is the easiest Sudbury guess of your life. So as always, practice these ideas on a good map of Ontario. I just linked to the first map that came up seems to work well. And I created this Ontario city maps a while ago for practice. It's nice to see that a few people play it, although I changed the number of cities that I leave in there. This is a pretty hard map. It's got a lot of the cities, uh, both big and small. And that's all. 
Ensuite, nous visiterons la belle province, Québec. If you're watching this when it comes out, you may have to wait a little longer because of Christmas, but I'll be back again soon enough. Don't get lost out there. Cheers.